You're watching The Wellness Hour, news that makes you healthier. I'm Randy Alvarez. This is an extreme makeover edition. Uh, with us, we have LA's general dentist, Dr. Melanie Marshall. Dr. Marshall, welcome to the program. Thank you, Randy. Thanks for having me. Now, we're talking about general dentistry today, but you say that there's a lot of advances and that a smile can really make a big difference in a person's life. You believe that? Oh, yeah, most definitely. Very small things that we can do will certainly change a person's smile and uh, in, in a, a really fast amount of time. Okay, good. Now, for people that don't know your practice, because I guess you do a lot, this concept of doing everything under one roof, um, like who's the typical patient? What are the different services that you offer? So my typical patient is someone, it's been a little while since they've been to the dentist. When I ask them, they hesitate, they say a few years, turns out it's been like eight to 10 years since they've okay. been to the dentist. Uh, maybe some things are starting to happen, teeth are breaking, they're feeling a little bit of pain. And so I'm there not to make them feel bad. I say, you know what, that happened. Your tooth broke, you got that other tooth extracted, but let's move forward. What can we do today? How do we make it better? Um, some of the services that I provide, I do whitening. So for people, they drink a lot of coffee, you know, it's LA. Is whitening popular? Like the oh, most yeah. popular? It's pretty popular. It's something small, right? That's That we can do uh, pretty quickly. And so uh, it's LA, a lot of people drinking coffee, tea, they got to stay up, it's fast yeah, yeah. kind of pace. And so we bring them in, we do whitening in an hour and boom, their teeth look so much different. So a wider smile just really changes people. Um, I've got a patient, she's in her 60s, actually she's in her 70s and she's still working. And she said, you know what, Dr. Marshall, something's going on, my teeth, they don't really look as great and I don't want people to judge me. I don't want them to know my age. I want them to know that I'm able to work. And so I said, you know what, let's do a little bit of whitening. And it really just changed her smile. It took years off of her face, it really did. Um, other services that I provide, I do cosmetic dentistry. So people think cosmetic dentistry is something special and it's really not. Everything that I do is cosmetic. Okay. If I'm going to yeah. put a crown on your tooth, I'm going to make sure that it matches your other teeth. Some people say, oh, well, you know, that that's in the back. No one can see that. Guess what? They can see it. You're laughing, you're smiling, you're joking, and you do this one thing and people can see all the way in the back of your mouth. So everything that I do, it's got to match. Uh, or it's got to go with whatever our plan is. I'm not going to put a super white tooth either because then it makes it look like you got a chiclet hanging out in your cheek. All right. Uh, it's ugly. <laughs> um, I also do root canals in my office. You know, everybody seems to be afraid of root canals. So is that like the most painful thing in dentistry? Is you that know why everybody's what? afraid of That's it? That's the misconception, Randy. People think, oh, I got to get a root canal. It's going to be a lot of pain. Well, we can, uh, I've got a license for oral conscious sedation. So I can give a person a pill. We do the root canal and it's basically painless. They don't remember what happened. You know, it's a root canal. Other things we do in the practice are Invisalign and invisible braces. So that's for the person, they've worn braces, uh, they didn't wear their retainers and they're just starting to see that tooth move and it's starting to bother them when they look in the mirror. That's something that if we catch it, I can move it pretty quickly and it, they're back to normal. Now the lower teeth, they seem to get crooked first. like. Once you get about 40 years old, it seems like those lower teeth start to, to move. Yeah. Is there any truth to that? There is a little bit okay. of truth to that, definitely. But we're able to step in and move those teeth back, and people love it. And that, now these invisible braces, like clear brackets, those kind of things. Clear brackets, you really don't even notice it. My husband, he was in invisible braces for about a year. Did you His make him do that? I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> Did you make him? Did you say, look, I because a, a husband of a dentist cannot. Have yeah, teeth, right? it was time. I had to. I had to kind of push him into it. But his coworkers, they didn't even realize that he had braces on. And then he got them off, and they're like, "Oh, hey, your smile looks nice," you know. <laughs> and that's exactly what we're going for. So Invisalign is hot right now. I'm in Hollywood, right? No one wants to have brackets. They've got auditions. They need to look like themselves. So they're able to. I put some little attachments, the same color as your teeth. Snap in the Invisalign, and you change them. They're just that simple and they're changing them once a week, and patients love it. Now, is this true? Because you're in Hollywood, right? I've had people say that, that when somebody wants to be an actor, actress, they go to Hollywood, the first thing their agent says, fix your teeth. Yes. Is there a truth to that? It is so true. Because their agent is seeing things on the camera that they didn't even realize were happening with their smile, their mouth, their appearance, and so their agent is just slowly tweaking things 
And of course, yeah, the teeth are the first thing that they want to do. And of course, we do a lot of contouring. And what I mean by that is if you've got a chip, why don't I just smooth it down a little bit? Sometimes people come in and they notice that when they smile, the two front teeth, like, why does my tooth, this tooth looks longer than the other? Maybe I need to do a little bit of a crown lengthening, kind of shape the gums in a way that makes the teeth appear the same length. Because, you know, not everyone's got money for a veneer, but they've got a little money for a little contouring. They have money for a little bonding. So that's what I try to do for my patients. Now, you know, I, I have uh, an employee she doesn't mind me bringing this up because I said I was okay. going, but she has a little bit of a gap in, in her front teeth. Uh -huh. I didn't even notice it, but she says she doesn't smile because of it. She says it, it makes her look like a, a kid, like a young person. And wow. I said, why don't you get it fixed? Yeah. And she, it's her fear of the dentist. That's something that case. we can do. It's so, such a small thing that we could change. I could put a little bit of bonding and close that space. Some people really like their, uh, their gap. I had one patient. She, uh, she said, well, you know, I like my gap, but maybe we could make it a little bit smaller. Sure, why not? Let's do it. Um, it's just a matter of the patient telling me what they want, and then I can fix it. Is, is it tricky for you or technically demanding to get it right? It is a little bit. It's definitely more, um, more straightforward when we're doing porcelain veneers because that allows the lab to shape it exactly the way we want to. But... I can do that in the office. I did it for a lady not too long ago and she loved it. Absolutely loved it. So you also do wisdom teeth? Yes, uh, I do uh, wisdom teeth frequently. Some people think that you can only go to an oral surgeon for wisdom teeth, but I've had an additional training and I also do the oral conscious sedation. So it's a perfect thing for them to do in my office and I might even be able to save them a few bucks because uh, I charge less than the oral surgeon. I've had your aunt on the show. Mm -hmm. She is a, a, a dentist. We had her on the show talking about dental implants. Yes. When she told me about you, she one of the things she referred to you as is like a super specialist. Yes. That you're able to do a lot of things. Elaborate, because this is like a new trend maybe in dentistry. I go to a lot of continuing education courses and I make sure that I have that knowledge. So whatever they need, I try to have the knowledge to do that. Of course, I still use my specialist if I need it, but my patients really don't want to go to someone different. Well, nobody likes going to the dentist. Yeah. I mean, look, you seem very nice, right? And people need to know, I'm, I'm trying to not to side with you. I'm just asking the questions, but do you still hear it? Like, no offense? Every not, day. Really? Every like, day. Like, what do they say? Like, well, you seem really nice from your pictures, but I don't like the dentist. I never have. I just get so nervous. I just get so anxious. And I tell them, let's, maybe you need to be sedated. You okay. know, let's consider that. And, and you, have, you don't have a funny comeback after all these years? You of, know what? No offense, I don't. doctor. <laughs> you know? I haven't. I think what I'm most excited about is replacing missing teeth with implants. That's the, the best thing that we can do. That's the standard of care nowadays. Um, before, we used to do bridges, and nothing against bridges. We still do them. But in order to do a bridge, I have to basically whittle down the tooth in front and the tooth in back. So if you're just missing one tooth, right? you have to carve down the two The two teeth. teeth on the side, oh. exactly, to, in order to put a bridge. And so what better way to preserve your other teeth than to just put the implant in the missing space? And I use small diameter mini dental implants to do that. So we place the mini implant in, we allow a little bit of healing time, and then we put our crown on. And then you get to save those other teeth. And the other thing about mini implants is that they're a permanent replacement for that tooth. And they cost about half the price of the conventional implants. And that's another reason why my patients have really gravitated towards them. Now what about bridges? I mean, what costs more, a bridge or... You know, if you're missing one tooth, a bridge or the mini implant? Normally the mini implant, you end up coming out uh, paying less with a mini dental implant and a crown than you do with a bridge. So why doesn't everybody do it? I mean, because logically it makes sense. Get your tooth back. I think people are scared. You know, they have told themselves that they can't get an implant. Maybe a dentist has told them you don't have enough bone for an implant. They think it's going to be too expensive. I can't afford that. But... Um, when they get in there, I'm able to see, oh, you have plenty of bone. Instead of adding a bone graft onto their bone, letting them heal for six to nine months, why not place an implant that's the size of their bone instead of having to add on? Now you're a dentist, so you probably think that the smile is the most important thing or one of the most important things. Certainly one of the most important. Let me hear important. your opinion. Uh, you know, it shows people who you are. It's what you present to the world. And I can't tell you how many patients I meet them 
in the chair, they're sitting there, they've got their mouth closed, arms crossed. And then when they open up and I get to know them, I realize what was missing. They wanted to improve something about their smile and maybe that's why they weren't so outgoing. I had one patient, a uh, really nice lady, very soft-spoken. She really didn't speak a lot and, and she really kept her mouth kind of closed. And then once I started to do my examination, I realized, look, you, you have a partial in your mouth and it's just glued in. And so we gave her some mini implants and we locked in her denture and she really had a great experience. In fact, she was at work one day and uh, her coworker said, oh, I noticed something different about your teeth. And she said, oh, I got veneers. And her coworker <laughs> said, oh my gosh, that's great. And she and I laughed because we know she wears dentures. So you just gave her like a cosmetic denture, like you upgraded her denture or locked it in? Yes, I locked it in. And so she got about six mini dental implants on her top of her gums. And we were able to lock in her denture and she loves it. She's never felt better. And people think she has veneers. And they think she has <laughs> veneers now. Back to the question about how I think the smile is very important. Um, when you go to an interview, you wanna be able to smile. I mean, who are they gonna hire? The person that's sitting there, they're not smiling or someone who seems outgoing. Yeah. They're giving it their best smile. Their teeth are nice and bright and white. You know, people really do judge you when you have bad teeth. Do you see changes in their personality when you fix oh, their smile? Certainly, yes. They they really come out of their shell. They start talking. That lady I was telling you about, she's chatting so much, I gotta get her out of the <laughs> office because I'm like, we gotta go. So also, when uh, you wanna make someone look like they don't have any money, you know, we're in Hollywood, right? Yeah, the and movies so, do this. In the movies, right, they'll take out someone's tooth. Well, what if you're just a normal everyday person and you're walking around without a tooth? We need to help you. Are you there know? a lot of people like that? Oh, definitely. And they just don't smile. They don't smile. They really don't. They speak really low. I even have some male patients. They grow their mustache really long so that it covers their teeth. Like the walrus. Exactly. So then no one really notices. And they just hope to kind of just go with the flow. And they hope no one really picks up on it. My question is, how do people know what their teeth are going to look like when it's all done? Like, how do you design the teeth? Usually what we do is we'll do a mock-up. We'll have the lab do a mock of exactly the shape, the size, and they even make them white so that the person can see. Um, because there's a lot of people out there and they're walking out there with these bright white veneers. They don't look very natural. Some people have them so long that they can't speak anymore. Their sounds are not- Because I see these big, yeah. big teeth. Is that because what the patient asked for or is that in the hands of the dentist in your opinion? I think the patient might have asked for that. But what I try to do is really encourage my patients to look at magazines, look at other people's teeth, and then we're going to choose a, to a tooth size that's right for your face and it's right for your smile. Because another thing is um, you don't want to have teeth that are so big that when you smile, all I see is your four front teeth. We need to make sure that everything shows and that it looks really nice and natural. Now, now, we talked on the phone, and one of the things you said that when you fix somebody's smile, right, and it could be something small, that they start taking selfies and posting them on Instagram or Facebook. Definitely. They do that so much. I mean, they really can't get out of the mirror. Even when they're sitting in the chair <laughs> and I do the final reveal and here's a mirror, they can't get enough of themselves. And actually, when I'm on Facebook and Instagram and Snapchat and I see people and uh, they're not smiling, I start looking at more of their pictures and I'm wondering, when are they gonna smile? Maybe there's something wrong with their teeth. And then I look and I'm like, oh, that's just something really small that I could have fixed and then they can smile. You know, you can only do a pouty face for so many uh, profile pictures before you know, it gets boring. We've, since we've talked, I'm noticing, I'm fi certain people never smile. They smile with their mouth closed. Yeah. So now I'm thinking they're probably hiding something. They probably are hiding something. And if they would just come in and say what it is that they don't like about their smile, we could fix it. And you know, they're at home obsessing over a small space or my tooth is out, it's tilted a little bit or my canine, it sits up here. If you come to the dentist, I can fix it. I'm, I'm like a fixer. And it could be affordable. I mean, it's and like it a, definitely can be affordable. This program right here is going to hit 26 million people. Would you say that there's million, over a million people that don't like their smile? Oh, more than a million That they people. don't smile because of their smile? I mean, definitely. because of their teeth? Yes. Or they're smiling in a way to conceal something. So if their bottom teeth are crooked, they make sure that they smile only with their top teeth. They try to um, do little things to kind of conceal something. And so when we 
help them, they feel so much better about themselves and they really come out of their shell. In one afternoon, we can really change someone's smile. And I'm wondering, and they're wondering why they didn't do it sooner. I didn't realize it could be that fast. That's what they all would so tell me. So with the pill, it, it seems like, you know, I haven't had this oral sedation, but you just give them a pill, mm -hmm. they're relaxed. Yes. And they almost have no memory of... They have almost no memory of it. And they're more relaxed. They're less anxious. They're not trying to pay attention to what's on my tray. What am I putting in their <laughs> mouth? You know, they're just kind of there um, and really able to be just at ease. That's it. Also with the oral conscious sedation, I'm able to do a lot more in each visit. So instead of having to come back to the dentist for one hour visits each time, I'm able to take care of six months worth of dentistry in just one appointment. And it really helps with uh, patients, you know, they're busy. I've got a lot of patients who are involved in the industry. They've got auditions. They can't make time to come to the like dentist. Like kids, I mean, you know, somebody with three kids. Yeah. You can't afford you to go back and work the, go dentist, to the right? dentist. You gotta go to soccer practice and volleyball practice and they don't have time to come to me. Now you also do dentures. Oh yeah, I do cosmetic dentures, Randy. Actually, they look so lifelike. They look so natural, so realistic. Um, my patients who come in, they've had their same denture for about 20 years. Why? You need to update that. Really? And they keep so, them that long? Oh, yeah, because they think, oh, you know what? It's really comfortable, or maybe I'll just go buy a little bit of adhesive from the store and I can make it feel a little bit better. But we have to update them. It's got to fit your gums and it has to fit your bone. And people don't realize that those things change as the years go on. Your bone remodels itself and maybe your denture doesn't fit the same way that it used to. That's something you need to come to the dentist for. And Randy, there are a lot of people out there and they hate their denture. The teeth are cracked. They're looking, uh, the teeth are short. They notice when I smile, I can't see my top teeth. That's something that I can fix. And it's pretty affordable now. You know, I got some patients, they're saying they got to go to Mexico to get a new denture. Maybe they got their first denture made in Mexico, but I can make it here and I can make it affordable. And the good thing about it is if we make you a new denture, uh, later I can convert it into a mini dental implant supported denture. So it's okay. something that you snap out. See, I'm even having trouble getting it off of the, <laughs> off of the model, but I put in a few implants and I am able to put some snaps inside of their denture and it really just locks in. Let me see this. So no more adhesive with this kind of a thing? No more adhesive. I've even had so some is... patients, they have trouble getting off this denture because it, it snaps in. in there so so tight. Okay, so this is this is it. Can you use their existing denture if they have I can use their existing denture. Now, not one of those uh, worn down dentures. It's gotta be something uh, relatively new. And these are mini implants that you're doing? Yes, mini dental Which implants. Which are less expensive? Less than... expensive, less invasive, Do they work? less healing time. They work Because some people like... say, Randy, the mini implants, they're not as good as regular implants. No, they work wonders. They stay in, patients love them and uh, they're able to live their life, you know? They're eating corn on the cob and ribs and they haven't had that in years. And, and back to your question about whether or not they last, uh, they did a 10 year study on mini dental implants and they found out that they have the same success rate as standard implants. So they really do work. People love them and uh, it's so much less expensive and that's what really makes it affordable for, for everyday people. And I can even make it a full set of teeth that lock in and they don't come out. They're permanent. So these mini implants, according to you, this might be the future of dentistry? Like, like dentures as we know them will be gone? Yes, dentures will be gone. And people will just be having on a permanent set of teeth that are locked in with their mini dental implants. Who knows how long that'll take? That'll probably take uh, 50 years from now maybe? Or oh even no, no, it's happening right now. So okay. it's, good. It's, the, it's the future. Now you do something called full mouth reconstruction. Is that a dental term? And yes. what is it? It's a dental term, but it just means that Someone maybe has avoided the dentist for a long time. Their gums are bleeding. Their teeth are loose. Their teeth are starting to snap off at the gums. They've got cavities. They've got pain. Well, I may need to use a combination of things. We may need to do some extractions. We may need to do some root canals, some crowns, some contouring of the gums in order to build their mouth back. And that's really what we're doing. And I have some patients and they're so happy that they found us. Uh, because we're able to really make a change in their life. All under one roof. All under one roof. I keep saying roof. that because I guess there's a new trend in dentistry where a dentist is, even though it's not a real term, but like a super specialist. They yeah. do root canals, extractions, implants. Exactly. All we right. do that because our patients really want to stay with us. They may want to go to the specialist. And of course, if they need to, I will send them to the specialist. But if I have the knowledge, 
why don't I just do it here? Where someone where you feel that you feel comfortable with. So this full mouth reconstruction crowd, as you call it, this is a person just with a broken down mouth. Everything's broken down, starting to break down. And giving them a fresh start. And we're giving them a fresh start. Yep. I also do root canals in my office. You know, everybody seems to be afraid of root canals. Is that like the most painful thing in dentistry? Is you that know why everybody's what? afraid of That's it? That's a misconception, Randy. People think, oh, I got to get a root canal. It's going to be a lot of pain. Well, we can, uh, I've got a license for oral conscious sedation. So I can give a person a pill. We do the root canal and it's basically painless. They don't remember what happened. You know, it's a root canal. Other things we do in the practice are Invisalign and invisible braces. So that's for the person, they've worn braces, uh, they didn't wear their retainers and they're just starting to see that tooth move and it's starting to bother them when they look in the mirror. That's something that if we catch it, I can move it pretty quickly and they're back to normal. Now the lower teeth, they seem to get crooked first. like. Once you get about 40 years old, it seems like those lower teeth start to, to move. Yeah. Is there any truth to that? There is a little bit okay. of truth to that, definitely. But we're able to step in and move those teeth back, and people love it. And it's amazing how small things can really change a person's perception of themselves. I had a patient, he came in, and he had these really big spaces in between all of his teeth. And he said for years, he asked his dad, you know, please let me get braces. I really want to close my spaces. And his dad said no. So he comes to me, the patient's in his 30s now. And he's like, I'm ready for braces. I, I want to close these spaces. And when we close the spaces and I showed him the after, you know, we're looking in the photo in the pictures. And uh, he was just so excited because he said, I don't know why I didn't do this sooner. Why didn't I close these spaces? And when he looks at his old pictures, he's just wondering, oh my goodness, it was terrible. He thinks so, it looks so bad. So th this is a guy that never smiled before. Not really. He didn't smile very big because he didn't want people to see those big spaces in between his teeth. So we were able to close the spaces. Now he looks like he's got perfect straight teeth. This is just a lesson in life. If you don't like something about yourself, you fix it. Because after a while, these things, they really hold you back. Uh, I also have a, a cousin and she came to me, she said, you know, I don't like these spaces in my teeth and also my teeth are starting to look a little bit yellow and we started Invisalign and then she was able to whiten her teeth during the Invisalign and that really just, that helped her. You do your own wisdom teeth. I usually do my own wisdom teeth extraction. So you've had additional training after dental school for after wisdom teeth. After dental school for wisdom teeth, okay. yes. And so it's really good to start when they're younger. So if you're 18, you feel those wisdom teeth back there, they're irritating the gums, that's the best time to have them taken out. Why? Why? Because we don't want them to create other issues. You know, they might make the other teeth start to be crowded or they might end up getting a cavity on the wisdom tooth creating this weird kind of defect on a, another tooth that's in front, a tooth that we actually want to keep. Because I am a general dentist and not an oral surgeon, my fees are usually much less expensive than an oral surgeon. They're numb. They're not going to be feeling any pain. If they're over 16, I can sedate them. And uh, patients really, they have a good experience. You know, you know I guess, and, and we're short on time, but dentistry or dental work can be expensive. It can be, Randy, but I usually work with my patients and we'll maximize their insurance. We'll get every penny out of their insurance that we can. And for the things that aren't covered, we'll help them with financing. Um, and I also have a membership plan in my office where a patient's going to pay for their two cleanings a year, their x-rays, their uh, checkup examinations, because people think that if I don't have insurance, I can't come to the dentist. You have like your own true. insurance plan. Yeah, it's a basically way. like a, a policy, a plan that I do inside of my office to help those people that don't have insurance because they should never feel like they can't come to their six month checkup because they don't have insurance anymore. That's not a, okay, that's so not a thing. What do you call it? in your practice. It's my membership plan. So your membership plan, Dr. Marshall's membership plan, do you have <laughs> yeah. a fancy name for it well, or anything? Well, my office name is New Smile Studio, so okay. it's New Smile Studio membership plan. Which is kind of like insurance. You it's kind of like insurance. You like legally maybe can't call it insurance, but it sounds like insurance You can't insurance call it insurance legally, but it is insurance in a way. But it is, yeah, because they're paying a fee one time and they're coming in to get their six month appointment and they get the necessary x-rays that they need. They also get an examination, uh, two, two checkup examinations. And let's say they have an emergency. Something happened, suddenly they're feeling pain, a tooth broke, whatever that is, that's also covered with it. And so people are really starting to gravitate towards that because they wanna have some sense of security. 
that they're not just uh, going to walk in and someone's going to write them this large treatment plan. So things can be affordable. It can definitely be affordable. We are out of time. But final message to somebody watching this, maybe they haven't been to the dentist, as you say, in eight or 10 years. Mm -hmm. uh, they have like bleeding gums, bad breath, broken down mouths, but maybe they're fear of the dentist or like everybody else, they're just, they don't want to go to the dentist. What do you say to them? So my final message to those or expense, patients like is- Like they're worried about money. I'm sorry, yeah. go ahead. My final message is, don't let your fear of the dentist hold you back. At least come in, let's do an examination, let's get a plan. Because we could start with something small. Maybe that's starting with the cleaning. Uh, or maybe you need to get a lot of things done at once and I can give you a pill, you'll be sedated and it'll, it'll move a lot faster. Uh, the process will move a lot faster for you. Um, I just don't, I don't like to harp on the past. So, you know, what's done is done. And let's start from today. What can we do today to make a little bit of progress, to get their mouth back healthy? That's the main, that's my final message. I want to thank you for coming on the show. Thank you. A, a real pleasure. You've been watching The Wellness Hour. I'm Randy Alvarez for now. I wish you good health. Thanks for watching The Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news with your host, Randy Alvarez, the authority on health issues.